Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Mushroom Bring you guys another video. In today's video, we're gonna sit here and talk about 10 things that I hate about the Tao Tao DBX1 140cc. So this bike, I already made a video talking about 10 things that I love, so if you guys do wanna go check that out, Go check it out. The reason I'm making this video is because I don't want to be biased. I don't want to say the bike is an amazing bike. I want to bring you guys the honest opinion, honest review of each of these bikes that I have. So in the past, we've done top five things that we love about the Apollo 007 and the Apollo 250. Now we're doing the DBX1. We will do the Peace Moto um, XB87 and then also the Apollo RFZ in the garage. We'll do that later on in the channel. But for now, I have enough ride time on this bike to the point where I know 10 things that I hate about it. So starting off with the first thing that I hate about this bike is it's not a known bike. And what I mean by that is it's not like a KTM, Kawasaki, a Honda. It's not any of those bikes. It's a Tao Tao, it's a Tao motor. Um, it's just, it's not known. It's one of those Chinese bikes. So it, nobody knows about it so when you're riding and stuff nobody like really cares too much about it just because it's not one of those high-end expensive bikes that you're used to getting and stuff it's just one of those cheap Chinese brand bikes where it's it's just people don't really care for it. people don't if they see it it's kind of like riding a Walmart brand skateboard for those of you guys that actually skateboard if you go buy a hundred twenty dollar skateboard at the mall at Zoomies or something like that and then if you go to Walmart and buy a $15 skateboard you go to a skate park people are gonna make like, oh Walmart brand Walmart brand they're just gonna make fun of you for having a Walmart brand something cheap when you can get the real version of it. So this is basically what it is. This is the non-brand dirt bike. And that actually leads up leads us up to number two, the, the second thing that I hate about this bike is the Chinese brand rep. Because this is a Chinese brand bike, people just hate on it. They say it's the worst bike, it sucks, it's trash, it's not worth the money, it's garbage. The, the hype on this bike is just bad. Like the bike is a good bike. I really do love the bike. It has some power. It's a very good starter bike. It's very cheap. And a lot of people say it's not worth the money. I mean, you pay $800, $900, under $1,000 on these bikes. On this bike right here, it was like $900. But you get it brand new. If you go get a brand new actual bike, you're spending anywhere from six dollars to $15,000 on one of those bikes. So the price difference is a massive price difference. Now this, starting off riding, it's a lot of fun, so you can enjoy doing it. And that's the thing, is I enjoy riding this bike. I really do enjoy it. I just hate how the Chinese rep is there with this bike. So if I ever take it out to like a street meet or a street ride or something like that, everyone's just gonna laugh at me for having this bike. And that's just another thing that I hate, is the Chinese rep on these bikes. But moving on to the third thing that I hate about this bike are the shocks in the back. The shocks in the back are very, very bouncy. Let me show you guys real quick. So as you guys can see, I'm tippy toeing right now, but the second I actually sit on it and drop, I don't have to tippy toe no more because the shocks drop down so much. And if I just bounce on the bike, you guys are gonna see that it's extremely bouncy. So it bottoms out. I'm just gonna jump up, land on it, and show you guys how bouncy it is. It bottoms out pretty easy, pretty fairly, um, which does suck about this bike. As you can see, it's extremely bouncy. It's a very bouncy bike. The shocks are very, very loose. It's not as stiff. Now, some beginner riders will like that, but for me, hitting jumps and stuff, you can't do it because it bottoms out. Uh, if you go to try to wheelie and you bounce it to pop it up, you'll hear it scrape the rear fender. So that's just another thing that sucks about having this bike, the DBX1 Teo Teo. It just... The shocks are extremely bouncy. Um, it's not too fun on hitting jumps or anything like that. You really just gotta ride it. That's all you can do. Just because the shocks are way too bouncy. Now moving on to the fourth thing that we hate about this bike is how much it bogged when you first got it out of factory. So basically the carburetor when we first got it, it bogged like crazy. It was it was not fun to ride at all. Just cause in first, second gear, if you're trying to gas it, you can't even gas it like that cause the bike would bog. So we had to go out and buy this knockoff Makuni carburetor, which was like $30, very cheap. But I noticed the second that we put in that knockoff Makuni carb, it stopped bogging instantly. So it, it was the carburetor, the stock carburetor that comes on this bike. I don't know if they put like a smaller carb or something, the jets in there, that won't match up with the 140cc engine that this bike has. Um, but this new carb that we have actually fits it perfectly. Very easy to install. I have videos on my channel installing carbs. I probably have one installing a carb on this bike when I first got it. So if you guys wanna go check that out, I'd appreciate that a lot. But yeah, the carb, if the bike bogged way too much, it's not fun when the bike bogs. You wanna be able to actually rip it. And when you rip it, it has that power that you're actually 
asking. Moving on to the fifth thing, we're gonna go with kind of the look of the bike now. Uh, the bike is sexy, but the chrome rims, as you guys can see, the rims aren't chrome no more. I switched them up. I made them look sexy. I put black rims with uh, the little uh, orange spoke skins on top of it. It looks really nice. The bike looks extremely nice. I love it. I love that I did that. But the rims that it came with were chrome. And I, I just don't like chrome. I don't know. I'm not a fan of chrome. I never was a fan of chrome. So having this bike with chrome rims, chrome exhaust, chrome, all that stuff, I just wasn't a fan. So what I wanted to do instantly was I wanted to change the rims. I was going to paint it gold to match the forks, but I was like, you know what? Let's not do that, let's just keep it simple. So we painted the outside of it black. I have a video on the channel if you guys wanna see how we did that. Um, and then we also put the orange forks, or not the fork, the spoke skins on top of those. So it, it looks really nice. If we take those skins off, you'll see a silver spokes. But I think it looks good, man. I think it looks good with the orange of the bike. So I'm, I'm really happy that I did that. But this, the chrome the chrome had to go. If it, if it came stock black, it would look really nice. And that leads us on to number six, the sixth thing about the aesthetic of the bike. So this engine is silver. I don't know, I'm not a fan of it. I mean, it, it, it's, I don't know, I just don't like when bikes, like I wish it was just two colors, orange or three colors maybe, orange, white, and black. This blue, I mean, it's all right, I'm not a, I don't hate it, but like having this gray, having this silver, having those chrome, like it's just too many different colors. I like if everything was the same. And then like, think about it, this is blue, the forks are gold, the freaking bike is orange, the rims are chrome, the engine is silver, like everything, nothing matches. Let me show you what a nice bike looks like stock. Here, come with me real quick. Now this bike right here, stock, I really do like it. I mean, it's black, the rims came black, the engine is black, um, the exhaust is black. I mean, this chrome uh, exhaust panel cover, whatever you want to call it is chrome uh, i could just easily take that off and not deal with it but everything on is black this is black rims are black engines black pegs are black foot brakes black exhaust is black forks are black frame is black gas tank is black and then you just have the basic colors so this bike is sexy stock now if you compare it to this one i have done some changes to it but look this is not black this is gray 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 silver chrome exhaust chrome rims gold forks i mean it's just all over the place i don't really like it i guess it's got a, a gray a dark gray gunmetal gray frame to it and then the silver engine but if it was black it would look so sexy in my opinion now again these are all opinionated things that i hate about the bike some of you might actually like it so don't rip on me in the comments saying that actually looks really good i like it i like it but these are just my opinions on 10 things I hate about this bike. Moving on to number seven is the gear pattern on it. If you guys can see right here, let me show you. The gear pattern on this bike is zero, one, two, three, four going up. So all of them are going up, which isn't very fun. I mean, everything is at one, two, three, four is all pushing up on this, which is easy. It keeps it simple. It's very easy, but it doesn't teach you how to ride an actual bike. Because once you get to a real bike or a motorcycle or anything like that, first gear is down and then neutral is a half click up. That half click up, you want to practice having a bike that has that because once you actually go riding and stuff, learning on that, you're just going to sit there looking stupid because you're sitting there trying to half click up and you're switching gears, stalling out and stuff like that. So having a cheap bike like this gives you that lead way to learn and practice and learn how to get used to it would be good, which the Peace Moto over there actually has that. It has one gear down, half click up for neutral, second, third, and fourth going up, which I like. That's the only bike that I've seen, the only Chinese bike that has that. Every one of these, the DBX, the Tail Tail, the Apollos, all have one, two, three, four going up. Now don't get me wrong, it's easier to learn, it's easier to ride, um, it's just, if you wanna practice for a real bike, having the other uh, gear shift would probably be better. Moving on to number eight, we're going with another aesthetic thing of the bike is the handlebar color. These handlebars are black now. That's because I spray painted it, but you can see some of it's chipping off. That's because it used to be silver, which it looked ugly, man. I, again, I'm not a fan of the silver and chrome look. Um, so these were silver, which matched these right here. Um, so it was about this silver color, which I guess matches the engine, but it's just it's just not pleasing to the eye. So I painted it black. I threw on some new grips, which were black with orange, just to give it a little bit of flavor. And I think it looks better with the black handlebars on it as well. Um, the, the piece moto over there I see comes with black handlebars. I could swap them out just because these these do chip because I painted it myself. These are chipping, so you're starting to see the chrome. If I went and put those on, I think since that's going to be my beater bike, this is going to be my 
this is my baby. This is going to be my baby. I'm going to actually mod this one up to actually be a lot faster than 140cc. I'm trying to see what we can do with it. We're, that'll be a future video and stuff like that. So stay tuned. This will be the mod bike, the bike that I make look sexy. I might paint the engine. Who knows what I'm going to do to it, but this is just going to be the bike that like I have in my li not in my living room because this is a Chinese bike. So again, the, the brand is just shot already just because it's a Tao Tao. If it was like a KTM, people would love it. But just because it's a Chinese brand, people hate it. But anyways... Yeah, the black handlebars. I really do like black better than the chrome and silver. Now moving on to number nine, talking about the handlebars. Um, under here, basically where it holds the handlebars, all bikes have it. It's a little screw or nut that you screw into these uh, right here to hold the handlebar up. These down here, they get very loose very quick. They're very hard to find. I had a very hard time getting a hold of them because they only sent me one so i wasn't even able to ride the bike for like literally three weeks because they couldn't send me the right piece like it took so long very frustrating and even the piece now i notice after like three rides two rides it starts getting loose the handlebars get loose so we got to go back under here tighten them down completely and just it's just annoying to have to keep going back and forth tightening it loosening it or get having it get loose and then tightening it again it's just not fun to do now moving on to the last thing that we hate about this bike or i hate about this bike is how i mean it's a nice bike i love the height of it i told you guys that but and i love how skinny it is but the way that the bike is made because it's so tall and so skinny it's very like flimsy it's very like not stable so when you're riding a bike like the peace moto or the apollo 007 the rfz any of those bikes, when you're riding on it, you can like wiggle on it and stuff like that, and the bike feels sturdy. It feels like it's gonna handle and it won't tip over. This bike is very prone to like leaning and tipping. So if you just go like this, you'll feel the bike like wobble a lot. Like you'll get a lot of speed wobbles on this bike, which makes it really hard to ride trails, going up hills and stuff, and rocks and stuff. Um, because the bike doesn't have that good of a center of gravity, it's kind of really all over the place. So you're going to fall a lot on this bike hitting trails compared to a normal bike that's more balanced. It's shorter, wider, so it has more balance. This bike's just tall and skinny, so I don't think the center of gravity on it is very good. It's very, very wobbly when you're riding it. But yeah, those are 10 things that I hate about this bike. This was kind of hard to make this video just because it's hard to think of things that I don't like about this bike. Don't get me wrong. This is a nice bike. I just wanted to bring you guys this video and uh, show you things that I don't like about it. So far, I've had the bike for maybe three months now, and those are the only 10 things that I've found problems with so far. Um, in the future, if we do find problems again, we will cover it on this channel. But for now, those are 10 things that we hate about the Tao Tao DBX1 140cc pit bike slash dirt bike. I don't know. I don't know even know if this is considered a pit bike because of the height. It's a lot taller than the other bikes, that's for sure. But I, I do love it. But guys, with that piece, I hope you enjoyed. See you guys in the next video. Peace.